We marvel. Yeah. It is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Amen? Amen. We do not take him for granted because, as you must have heard from your pastor, to take God for granted is to be grounded. Yes. Amen? So when we thank God for his finger, what do we see? We see his hand. When we thank him for his hand, we see his arm stretch out. Continuously. And, and the pastor said it's so right. He says, we have to make thanksgiving a way of life. We have to make thanksgiving a way of life. Look at Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 5. In verse 3. No, in verse 2. He said, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, Neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. And to look therein. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Tell your neighbor, Weep not. He says, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. Then, look at what it says. Verse 9. And the song, the new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Now, I love verse 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Has made us, I saw in your logo of this ministry, kings and priests. Is that right? That's right? Made us kings and priests. That's what God has made us. Amen? Amen? And so, if for anything else, or for nothing else, but the fact that he has made us kings and priests. One time I was speaking, I said to them, if you listen to Moses, the Bible talks in Exodus how Moses said, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and rider thrown into the sea, fearful in praises, doing wonders. God delivered them from Pharaoh. And they were so excited. They praised God with everything, with songs and singing, because God delivered them from Pharaoh. Then I said, how much more us? God did not deliver us from Pharaoh. He delivered us from Pharaoh's boss, Satan himself. So even the Old Testament... Are you following? Yes. Miriam with the tambourine and all of that and all of the singing. For what? Deliverance from Pharaoh. And here you are. Not only has he delivered you from the kingdom of darkness, mm. he has made you a king Amen. and a priest. Amen. You should be thanking him forever. Amen. 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 Our sister shared a testimony and she said something very striking. I don't know if you heard it, but I heard her. The lady that you know, shared the testimony and said that God has brought her to a place of health. He said, he brought me to a place of health. And I said, how true. It's not only a place of health, it's a place of wealth. Because in Psalm 66 verse 12, yes. he says, he has brought us out into a wealthy place. So he has not only brought you to a healthy place, he has brought you to a wealthy place. Amen? Amen. So in this place, you are not only in a healthy place, but you are in a wealthy place. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, the psalmist says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within Amen. me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. Somebody tell you, never forget not. Forget not. not. We're talking about Thanksgiving. He says, forget not all his benefits. And then he starts listing them out. He has forgiven all my iniquities. Mm. Now, if your iniquities were not forgiven, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? He has healed all my diseases. He has redeemed my life from destruction. He's crowned me with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies my mouth with good things so Amen. that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. And then he tells us right there in Psalm 68, or 69 verse 19, that God daily, daily, yeah. daily yeah. loads us with benefits. Amen. Someone say daily. Daily. That's a good one. Yes. He daily loads us with benefit. And so this, this evening, I'm, I'm going to be speaking to you briefly on what I have titled 
accessing or assessing the maximum load of God's benefits. I mean, we've come to thank Him for what He has done. But listen, there is a maximum load of His benefits. The maximum load means the full load. In, in, in the Greek, it calls it the pleroma of God's blessing. The full load. Full load of God's blessing. Amen? Amen. The full load of God's blessing. We read in Revelation chapter 5, which we, we, we saw from verse 10, that says, He has made us kings and priests unto God, and we shall reign on the earth. And in verse 12, it says, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain, now listen, to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, Amen. glory, Amen. blessings. And then the question is, who did he receive them for? For himself? No. He had it all before, you remember? Yeah. Jesus said, now Father, honor me with the glory that I had before. Because the Bible tells us that he laid aside his glory. So he didn't need it. But he received it for who? For me. So we were quickened together with him, raised together with him, and made to sit together with him so we can assess the maximum load of God's benefit. Now I want 2012, because a lot of people make resolutions at the beginning of the year. And say, you know, this year, so and so and so and so, this is what I'm going to do, these are the things I'm going to aim for. 2012, I want you to make up your mind that you are going to assess the maximum load of God's benefit. Amen. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. Okay, say 2012. 2012. I'm assessing, I'm assessing the, maximum load the maximum load of God's benefit. Of God's benefit. Amen. Amen. So God daily, daily, daily loads us with benefit. But do you know something very interesting, and this is instructive. Um, there is what you call the carrying capacity. When you go into an elevator, they tell you maximum load uh, 12 persons or whatever it is in, in pounds or something, right? When you go into a car, they will say maximum load, so, so number of occupants. Even in the hall, uh, am, I, am I right? The, the fire marshals will tell you the maximum load is so and so, which means there is a carrying capacity. It also means that if you are going to assess the maximum load of God's benefit, then you must increase your carrying capacity. Uh -huh. I tell your neighbor, increase your carrying capacity. <laughs> so th this evening, what I want to tell you is how to increase your carrying capacity. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, that's a requirement from us. Amen. Amen. I love the way Paul puts it. He says in First Timothy chapter four, verse seven to eight. He says, "Exercise thyself unto godliness." Exercise. Someone say exercise. exercise. Because that's the only way you increase your carrying capacity. If you are, if you want to. If you want to take more load, what do you do? You exercise yourself. If you are able to lift up this and you want to take something heavier, what do you do? Exercise. So the same thing. If you're going to carry the maximum load of God's benefits, you need to exercise yourself. And I'm going to show you in a few minutes certain things that you're going to exercise yourself in to be able to carry and access the maximum load of God's benefit in 2012. Is anybody interested in that? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is faithful. Yes. I said God is faithful. Yes. And our unbox scripture is taken from Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 3. Paul speaking there. He says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Amen. Then verse 17 says that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. Now listen now. That ye being rooted and grounded in love rooted and grounded in love rooted and grounded in love there's a reason for that emphasis rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ 